talk to us about TO. $233 million being put to work. How does this build out PayPal? Well, so, you know, TO is a bill pay provider for the underserved. And really, PayPal from our very beginning has been a democratizer uh, of you know, money. And we really think a lot about how we democratize the management and movement of money around the world. And you know, the underserved is a big part of how we think about bringing folks into that democratization. And TO as a bill pay provider to the underserved, we think of you know, bill pay as a critical service for those folks. It's also the underserved we think about you know, as a population of you know, nearly, you know, or more than a third of the U.S. population, two billion plus people around the world that are underserved by traditional financial products, that we think we can give a pathway not only into, you know, financial inclusion, but also into the digital economy. And so we think about TO as part of our broader vision around how we democratize the management and movement of money for consumers around the world. So are you thinking about bringing consumers from TO onto other PayPal products? What sort of ones would be easy to, to offer them right now? Well, also, you know, with TO, you can walk into a store with cash and make a bill payment to one of their 10,000 plus billers. You can do that at 60, uh, 65,000 locations around the U.S. We have similar products with PayPal, for example, like PayPal Cash that we announced a few months ago, mm. where you can walk into a 7-Eleven, load money onto your PayPal account, and even though you may have not had a bank account or a card, all of a sudden you now have money in a PayPal account and you're part of the digital economy. You mm. might not have been able to make... Uh, e-commerce purchases before, but now you can walk into a 7-Eleven, load cash onto that, and with PayPal, you're now part of the digital economy. We think this uh, acquisition serves a similar customer segment that we can give access to a broader set of digital products uh, as well. It sort of screams to me that uh, I think of underserved, unbanked, I think of the emerging markets as well. How does this fit into the internationalization of PayPal? Yeah, so we think about that, you know, we're in uh, nearly 200 markets around the world, uh, nearly 200 million consumers around the world, and and, you know, two billion plus uh, consumers are, are considered underserved uh, worldwide. And so we think about ways we can serve those folks and bring them into the digital economy, give them access to financial inclusion. Zoom that we acquired, uh, yeah. you know, eight, 18 months or so ago also has an international play, those international remittances, oftentimes serving the underserved. Bill pays one of the things that Zoom provides to those folks. And so we think of uh, this as a, as a great uh, complement to what we're doing with Zoom and what we're doing with uh, access for the underserved uh, worldwide. I mean, of course, you joined PayPal via an acquisition. You That's had right. brought Braintree, brought Venmo into the, the larger hub. That's right. What is what is the mindset of PayPal about acquisitions at the moment? Mm. Is it, you talk about the underserved, the unbanked, is it only that area that you want to make acquisitions? Where else could you be building up? Well, I think, you know, we've obviously had a huge focus in mobile. You know, we did more than $100 billion of mobile uh, volume last yeah. year. That's part of Braintree and Venmo coming in. Uh, and, you know, we think that there is a huge move to uh, consumers moving to mobile as their primary computing device. Those are areas that are really interesting to us and where we've led the way and, and want to continue to push. Uh, we think about uh, financial inclusion for both consumers and merchants uh, as really interesting to us. And so those are places where we'll continue to have a lot of focus. And you know, we've had a number of great acquisitions. Uh, and we've also looked to go build organically in great ways. You know, we did uh, 11 plus strategic partnerships uh, just you know in the course of, in this sort of the last year or so, and that included not only Visa and Mastercard and and uh, in, in traditional banks yeah. where we're partnering to bring services there, but also folks like Facebook where we're a key payment provider inside of Facebook and Google with Google Play and a number of other technology partners that we're working with. So we're really you know bringing that sort of startup spirit and innovative mindset both through acquisition as well as inside the company itself to go really, really drive forward on mobile financial inclusion and partnering with a broader ecosystem to drive those, those things forward. That was quite a change of tack when you got into bed with Visa and MasterCard. How is that coming to fruition? Because many feel, dare I say it, that PayPal was leading the charge years ago and it dropped the ball. It let other companies get ahead of it within the fintech space. Does the Visa and MasterCard agreement help win back some of that race? Well, I think, you know, PayPal's always been one of, uh, by every objective measure, one of the most successful fintech companies, uh, uh, you know, in, over the last 20 years. I think the partnership with Visa and MasterCard really, you know, is a demonstration of how our interests are pretty aligned with the rest of the ecosystem. We have always uh, really, really pushed for the digitization of cash mm -hmm. and brought a lot of volume to players like Visa and MasterCard and, and issuing banks and, and, and those types of players. And 
historically there were some places where maybe we weren't working so closely on those things, but broadly we've always had a common interest around fighting cash as the common enemy and bringing that into the digital world. And I think we've we've led the way on that and partnering with folks like Visa and MasterCard and issuing banks lets us do even more of that. Talk to me about your baby Braintree and about the competition that's out there. How do you stack up against Stripe? How do you fend off the competition when it comes to ensuring you're servicing the most fast growing mobile paid yeah. ordered companies out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Bo both Braintree and Venmo, from sort of standing start, uh, you know, six, seven years ago, have grown into something, you know, even beyond uh, our own wildest expectations, uh, with you know a huge portion of the best next gen commerce companies in the world running on Braintree, you know, Uber and Airbnb and Dropbox and folks like that. And so Braintree's continue to do really well and grow nicely there. And then Venmo now, you know, at, at a run rate of $20 billion plus annually, uh, you know, is, has exceeded, you know, just about, uh, you know, every sort of financial payment app you could think of out there and most commerce apps uh, to go with that as well. So both have, have continued to grow wildly uh, and we have lots more in store for those as well.